We're gonna show you what it takes to make and recycle the shingle. What's happening to all these damaged asphalt shingles removed from homes, loaded onto trailers and then pulled away? When you see these shingles here, they're, I mean, by, by volume, it's less than, uh, what, 2% maybe? You have to be careful how much in the roads you put in, because early on when they were doing it, the roads were crumbling because too much fiberglass, so. 13 Investigates has discovered right now, no recycling center is actively recycling asphalt shingles in central or northern Indiana. No it one. It takes up a lot of space. It could potentially leach materials that are not great for groundwater. So we want to keep those kinds of things out of landfills as much as we can. This is brand new. This is, I mean, look at those suckers. I know, they're brand new. Look, the, they're brand, brand that's a starter. This, yeah, this is nothing. We'll see whole bundles. Three, four, five, ten. Oh, I believe that. On the website of a major shingle manufacturer, we found lots of roofing companies with that symbol next to their name. It means they've pledged to recycle shingles. So that helps so we don't have to continue to manufacture the same level at all times. And I think where we need to improve is on the recycling part of it. But for now, when it comes to these shingles, most roofing companies and contractors and consumers are left with only one option. Landfill. Landfill. In the landfill. <laughs> True story, not fake news. <laughs>Welcome back to Roofing Insights channel where you can find the truth about the roofing industry. In this video, I will show how roofing manufacturers and big players in the roofing industry brainwashing you about recycling efforts. But first, I want to ask you, please support this video. Give it a like, comment below. This video is hard to make. In this video, we will share not only our investigation, but also 13 news from Indiana. We have traveled to Kenosha, Wisconsin, Illinois, obviously we're covering here in the state of Minnesota and I have traveled to over 100 places this year I know what's happening all over the country most roofers and most homeowners have heard that we have technology to recycle asphalt shingles and reuse them in our roads unfortunately the percentage is so small 25% of our landfills are roofing materials and in my research less than 5% of asphalt shingles are getting recycled. To be honest with you, I think number is actually much lower, one to 3%, but let me show you what we have found. We're in Kenosha, Wisconsin. In this video, we will share with you journey of asphalt shingles. Right there, you can see shingle, asphalt shingle recycling plant. You see mountains of shingles. We're gonna go talk to them and see what it takes to recycle a shingle, asphalt shingle. Everybody is so nervous when they have a camera pointing at them. Yeah, you know why? No, nobody, nobody wants to talk you anymore. You can't take it back. <laughs> it's like shooting a gun. Bullet leaves the barrel, it's gone. So from my investigation, I visited two places, one in Kenosha, Wisconsin, another one in Illinois. I talked to people who are actually recycling shingles and have a contract with the road companies, put them back in the roads but those people were hard to talk to they were afraid and that's why i want to show you news 13 investigation to reduce my liability because when you call asphalt shingle manufacturers when you uh, interview people on camera everybody gets nervous and we don't have big budgets for lawyers like billion dollar companies do so we have to be very careful what we say and what we show i'm gonna keep showing you both investigations at the same time 13 investigates has learned a major major recycling effort here in Indiana just hit a huge hurdle. This means millions of pounds of material that could be recycled aren't getting recycled at all. Tonight our Bob Siegel uncovers what's being wasted and where all of it's ending up. All summer, all fall, roof after roof after roof in central Indiana ripped off and replaced. The result of several hailstorms that caused more than $500 million in damage. First, I want to pause. It's not just North and Central Indiana. It's all over the country. When I did this poll on my uh, YouTube community page, let me show you some comments. One month ago, I did a poll that billion dollar opportunity in the roofing industry figure out how to recycle asphalt shingles. Do no one figured it out yet. I made a bold statement month ago before we even 
uh, travel to recyclers and I said nobody figured it out yet and so many guys all over the country says the same thing Randy says I've been thinking about the same thing for years if you saw our landfill that handles the greater New Orleans area it's entirely shingles just about literal gold mine for someone to take it and do it right John Johnson says I agree with me sure recycling doesn't sell products so they don't encourage it I'm in Minneapolis for the weekend beautiful city I'm a roofer in Nashville. Thanks for the content. Carlos Casas says, we used to do it in San Diego, California. It is very hard to get rid of materials once ground up and big asphalt car uh, uh, corporations dominate the market, but it can be done. This was back in 2012. I am strongly considering it again. Very sad to see tons of shingles ending up in our landfills. San Diego, s and roof tier of Corp. Benjamin Peltzer says, here they reportedly reuse the asphalt in roads. I'm doubtful of the claim. Yet another roofer says that they are doing it or they say they're doing it, but he doubts it. Storm Boston 43 says the lifetime stuff is crap. Also sales technique, 50 year shingle. Where are they testing the product? Absolutely agree. Another big lie in the roofing industry that shingles will last 50 years. Absolutely not. Shingle will last about 20 years. And we'll talk later in the video why they're doing it. It's happening all over the country, not just in Minneapolis, not just in Illinois, not just in Midwest, Indianapolis, but all over the country. In 2021, we have this bottleneck created in the roofing industry where at the top, we have very few suppliers. Under them, we have about 10, 11 manufacturers, and then we have thousands and thousands of roofers. But you know what problem is to all of this? to this recycling program and the rest of the roofing industry problems is that roofers are not united. We don't talk to each other. We don't have a union. This YouTube and Facebook not gonna fix the problem. We have to meet, we have to meet in person. And I'm gonna be presenting roofing industry report, 2020 state of the industry report at roofing process conference. I wanna invite you to attend. It's our biggest event of the year. You can meet a couple thousand people with us, best vendors, best roofers, true leaders in the roofing industry. I'm gonna be preparing a roofing industry report as I see it the trends, material trends, shortages, problems, uh, labor shortages, problems. And I want you to attend and collaborate with other roofers. We have to think bigger. When we unite, we're very powerful. We have to send strong message to the top, to the people who can make smart decisions to help the industry and we have to start making them accountable. Attend the Roofing Process Conference in beautiful Orlando, Florida next month, December 8, 9 and 10. I'm gonna put link to the event in comments below. Please share this video if you like it and you support this message. But what's happening to all these damaged asphalt shingles removed from homes, loaded onto trailers and then pulled away? 13 investigates follow the trailers, lots of them, and they all ended up here at the Indianapolis Southside Landfill. It's a shingle graveyard. In just the past two years, this place has buried a staggering amount of shingles, 30 million pounds of shingles at this one landfill. And staff here say most folks have no idea. The homeowner, uh, they don't know where those shingles are going. But you probably should. Industry experts estimate these petroleum-based shingles take three to four hundred years to decompose. And, and this is one of the saddest part of the story that people just don't know. If you ask average salesperson, average roofing salesperson, 90% of roofers will tell you that we are building roads with old shingles. We recycle. I've been a roofing contractor for seven years. I have three dump trailers. I've been taking shingles to landfill that claims to be green claims to recycle and yet uh, every single day I would take them all the way up to the hill, drop them and I know that they were just buried over there. You show up in the landfill and there is a line of hundreds of contractors, hundreds, and they go, all go up. Right before we did this video, we actually flew the drone over Demcon and I've made a call with them. I called my local landfill that I've been taking shingles for years and I asked them, do you recycle? You know what they told me? Yes, we do. Um, we try to recycle as much of the shingles as possible. The cleaner 
that your loads are as far as not having packaging and things like that, the, the better ability we have to recycle them. Okay, we flew the drone yesterday and we don't see machines working. We see shingles getting buried. So they do have an area where shingles are separated, but the amount of shingles there is so small. Very important element here. Shingle recycling is not tied to actual shingle recycling. It's, it's tied to road construction. So Kenosha location, recycling in Kenosha is already shut down for the season. Same in Minnesota. So now we shut down for the next, who knows, four or five months until warmer times. What's going to happen to all the shingles? And even before uh, shutdown, even when we could build roads, they have very small area that did separate shingles on the side. But again, when I called Damcon, when I asked them, hey, can you tell me? Because I, I feel like I'm lying to my customers. I feel like I'm misleading consumer. Can you tell me how many shingles are you actually recycling and how many getting buried? Oh, I will get back to you. We don't want to lie to our customers. We don't want to say that we recycle if we know we don't. No, I understand that. Um, let me do this. Let me get your name and your phone number and... Um, we can get some information out to you as far as our process for shingle recycling and things like that possibly. So then you kind of have that for a backup with your customers. How does that sound? She never did. Let's keep watching. Environmental advocates say putting them into landfills should be a last resort. It takes up a lot of space. It could potentially leach materials that are not great for groundwater. So we want to keep those kinds of things out of landfills as much as we can. And the truth is, they do not have to end up here. To show you what can happen to old shingles, let's take a little road trip. About 150 miles south to Celestine, Indiana. Right next to the bakery, you'll find this. It's a construction salvage company where Jeremy Batts focuses solely on recycling old shingles. 10,000 tons of shingles. They get ground up into a material that looks like black sand and it then goes to paving companies as an ingredient in new asphalt for highways, roads, and parking lots. I always thought there's got to be something, you know, this could be used for a better way to do this than just throwing things in a landfill and burying it. What Jeremy's doing in southern Indiana used to happen all over the state, but not anymore. Is it just a recycling center or are you also like a... Strictly roll off truck or uh, shingles. Only shingles. Absolutely. So the whole facility. I know in Minnesota you have to, uh, you, cannot, you cannot have like debris like pallets or siding or plywood. What's your rule yeah, for the, that? The goal here is, is when they get the shingles in off this trailer, they want it to basically be able to go right into the grinder. So that's our job is, this is the final touch. When, when, we, when we process the shingles, shingles at our recycling facilities, we clean out 95 to 99%. And when you see these shingles here, they're, I mean, by, by volume, it's less than, uh, what, 2% maybe? How did it get here? It comes here from landfills? No, this comes straight off of uh, basically through a, a recycling facility, a construction demolition recycling facility. So you're just processing. And then we process it, load it out, and off you go. So we travel all the way to Chicago to a recycling facility as well to show you what actually is taking place because it's hard to recycle the shingle. It has to be clean. You cannot have big, you know, pallets, plastics. They want to have as clean of the shingle materials as possible. Uh, and that's a big challenge for landfills. If they, I remember at Demcon, if they see one or two pallets or if they see packages, they ask you to clean it. And that's what actually takes it all the way to, uh, to the top because it's too much money for them to separate it. But if it's clean, it's a little bit easier. So we traveled to Chicago. Let me show you what we found there. That's a lot of shingles. What do you do with the cedar? That will get that'll get ground up in this machine over here, and okay. brought and brought and used as uh, either road material or uh, or um, wood is used for cover. 
yeah. wood? Yeah. So how is that this is, material? This is when it gets shredded up, see how it's all mixed with the tar paper? To, to sort out that wood, and it, it costs so much money to, for the labor. So what we do with it is shred it up in a, a, a slow speed shredder, and then, then they can use it as uh, cover material or road material at uh, the landfills. So when we start talking about landfills and road material and recycling, if they don't use cover material that we provide them, they have to excavate virgin dirt or they have to buy rock. So that's gravel. cheaper. Well, it's a reuse. Yeah. It's a final best use of this product. Before, so it still goes to landfill, but just But the it's road. used as the road material. I mean, this is this is brand new. This is, I mean, look at those suckers. I know, they're brand new. Let's, they're let's bring, the that's a starter. Yeah, bring your truck over Joe here. Joe probably wants it. Look at this. Oh, this so, is the starter? Yeah, this is starter. Someone is actually getting paid for this. Look how much it is. For entire roof. How much is it? So the recycling center does, they separate good from the bad, um, you know, cedar and any wood materials go to one pile. And they're trying to get shingles as clean as possible. So they're gonna separate it, reload it, and take it to Kenosha to recycle there. I mean, that one and this one is almost a bundle. A lot of times, Dimitri, we'll see, forget the, this, this is nothing. We'll see whole bundles. Three, four, five, ten. Oh, I believe that. You know, and they just lay them right on the top. They're on the top. One of the reasons we decided to go to Chicago because when I did my research, when I make, was making uh, my polls online to ask my community if they recycle in their city, most roofers from Chicago told me, yes, we do. In Chicago, we don't have this problem. And this is the only place I found. So if you do live in Chicago, please contact those guys. Please go to this recycling center. And please, in your area, you do have a good player who's trying to do things right. As I'm talking to recyclers in Wisconsin, I start showing them what leaders in the industry are doing. And if they heard about any of those efforts or if they see any of those monies, uh, those commitments, then they're like, who are they? Who is Owen Scorning? Who is GF? They don't know. So these are the heroes of the story. These people who actually do the hard work of recycling, they've never heard from Owen Scorning, GF, Malarkey, Ico, Atlas. Let me show you those websites. Let's go to Owen Scorning. This is their website. Shingle Recycling. Looks so good. Look at these pictures. You see a roofing contractor teams up with the local shingle recycling centers well in in minnesota you can't you call them they'll tell you where to take the shingles you go there and shingles are getting buried step number two old roofing shingles are removed yeah we're gonna remove them to install new one number three shingle recycling center grinds up the old shingles sounds good and picture is picture perfect of course on the website and then number four recycled roof shingles are prepared for the second use and of course we're showing roads here when i talked to Owen scorning uh, representative a couple days ago i asked him what exactly are they doing and he told me dimitri we did not we i agree with you we did not fix this problem but we are the leader and I asked him this question. I was just honest. I'm like, how can you call yourself a leader? You, you mentioned earlier, you said Owen Scorning's sustainability leader. I mean, if if you, if we as an industry saw, uh, only recycle, let's say 5% of the shingles, and you claim to be a leader, like out of those 5%, what's your con contribution? Where's the leadership coming from in, in sustainability? If 95% of what you guys produce goes to landfill, where, I guess, leadership comes? Because we, we, we are not solving anything. It's, it's a, such a small effort. It's literally dropping the bucket. But we say that we're leaders in sustainability. I just don't understand where this disconnect is. So a couple, a couple things, let me clarify. So we are a leader in sustainability as a corporate enterprise. Right. So when you what, look what, is, what does all, it mean? All, um, so I'm trying to. So we are re committed to reducing our environmental footprint. Um, I'm actually going to shoot you 
what we're doing. So we're going to reduce our environmental footprint. We're going to expand our product handprint, right? So make our products better. And we're ensuring that we're working with people overall. So where we are with our different businesses, right? So we have composites, insulation, and roofing. Different businesses are in different places as far as reducing the footprint, right? Or making our products longer and more lasting. If we have a problem that's 100% and we only fixed 2% of that problem, 2%, you call yourself leader in the 2%. So there's a 10 players, all, all 10 all of them call themselves leaders. Look at Malarkey. We strive simply to make the best shingle the most sustainable way. That's a statement by Malarkey. Greg Malarkey um, said this thing. Sustainability is not what you say, it's what you do. Absolutely. It, it sounds great on paper. All of this manufacturer says the same thing. We are the leader. We recycle. We are sustainable. We are green. It's important to us. <laughs> but yet, Nobody make a dent in a problem. 25% in landfills is a roofing products that you guys are producing every day. Where's the leadership? You're making this impact and you're trying to look this big. It's almost like if you are sign up for the gym and you go work out one time a month, but you're trying to portray yourself as a professional athlete. That's what's happening. On your website, you're this professional recycler, when in reality, you're just attending one day out of 30. It doesn't make you professional. And I don't wanna pick on any of these manufacturers. I mean, look at ICO, the same thing. Sustainability and circularity. It's in our DNA. <laughs> I mean, it's big, nice words. I mean, it sounds good. This is why roofers, you know, average roofer will believe this. You go to any of the, those websites and it's in our DNA. It's important to us. We do the best we can. And then it's us who remove the shingles and take it and bury it on the landfill. I'm going to explain to you shortly why these manufacturers are making these claims. But first, let's see what else is happening in Indiana. 13 Investigates has discovered right now no recycling center is actively recycling asphalt shingles in central or northern Indiana. No one. And that's why millions of pounds of shingles are going straight to landfills, even though many roofing companies would have you think otherwise. On the website of a major shingle manufacturer, we found lots of roofing companies with that symbol next to their name. It means they've pledged to recycle shingles. But when my 13 Investigates producer and I called some of those companies. Do you know where you guys recycle them? Some said they aren't sure if they're recycling. A few admitted they are not, and others. Are you sure about that? Gave us bad information that's simply wrong. Those roofing companies told us they are bringing their shingles here to the Indiana Shingle Recycling Company on the south side of Indianapolis. Just one problem. The owner of this place tells 13 News he isn't accepting any shingles for recycling, and he hasn't for more than a year. And that's a really big problem, guys, because we are getting the same response. Nobody has given you clear message. Nobody has given you clear instructions what actually is happening, what exactly they're doing. It's political answers. We're working on it. We're doing it. We, we, we're developing technology. We will change the world tomorrow. But today, let's just add 10, 20, 30 million more pounds to our landfills. And it's okay. As long as we're honest and we're not misleading our consumer, we should be fine, right? Just stop lying about it. If you did not fix the problem, just say, hey, we have a problem. We did not fix it and we're not even close. But this is what's happening. The company has a mountain of shingles it can't get rid of. From overhead, you can see just how many shingles have piled up as the company's grinding machine sits idle. The owner says no one in central Indiana is buying discarded shingles right now. Ray's Recycling told us the same thing. That's the only other company in central Indiana with a permit to recycle shingles, and it stopped accepting them too. And this state inspection report obtained by 13 Investigate shows what really happened to the shingles this company collected for recycling. In just the past few months, 3.3 million pounds of those shingles have been dumped, you guessed it, at the Southside Landfill. 
like roofing contractors tell 13 News they would like to recycle because it actually costs them less than taking a load of shingles to the dump. Absolutely agree with this statement. All the roofers that I know would love to recycle because we don't like to lie. We want to, to be competitive. And if you guys support this video, like and share, we will make the difference. It's so many roofers who wants to see the change. And this is the year when we start demanding the change. This is the record breaking year for all players. Manufacturers have price increase of 30% average across the country. What are they going to be doing with those monies? It's huge profits. It's okay. It's okay to be profitable, but we also have to do what we say we're going to do. If you want to be a sustainability leader, you have to start investing in sustainability. This is political decision. Roofers cannot change it. It takes billion dollar corporations to actually make some moves at the top. But what we don't see is we don't see a roofing contractor magazine talk about this. We don't see media companies inside the roofing industry talking about it. You, you're not going to hear it on a podcast. You know, big supply companies not going to talk about the obvious. We have three plants here in Minneapolis, Certainty, GF, and Owens Corning. And I've seen shingles from those plants actually ended up on the same landfill that my roofing company used to dump our shingles. Problem is real. Everybody knows what's going on. Everybody's lying and nobody's doing anything. The roofers have the best interest of the consumer and consumers also want to change. Why do they do it? Very simple to be competitive with metal shingles, because metal actually will get recycled, and with others. How many people will buy the shingles if they know for a fact it's ended up at landfill? They did not tell that homeowner that there is 99% chance that his roof gonna end up in the landfills. I'm probably gonna get cease and desist from one of these players by the end of this video, who knows? But this is the truth, and this is the message we have to send to the industry. When Erasmo Ramirez works in Texas and North Dakota, he says he always recycles the shingles, but not here. Pretty much here in Indiana, the only thing that we do with the shingles is we just take it to the landfill. It's a drastic change from 10 years ago when paving companies couldn't get enough of these shingles. Because they offered a less expensive way to produce hot mix asphalt, recycled shingles were wildly popular. That is until some paving companies started using too much. That led to premature cracking and potholes. So the mixes just weren't lasting as long as we expected them to. Richard Willis with the National Asphalt Pavement Association says that's what prompted Indiana and other states to cut back on how much recycled shingle material could be used in their road projects. Demand for these shingles plummeted, but that could change. I know there are numerous contractors that have figured out how to use them effectively. The engineer says recent testing and studies show asphalt made with recycled shingles is durable when it's produced correctly. You can see it coming off the belt in a nice consistent manner. And this guy on the, on the line is pulling out any garbage, okay? Then it goes up through the, the grinder and it's coming out onto this conveyor here. One thing that I have learned that you can only add three to 5% of this aggregate from the shingles into the roads. The reason is fiberglass. One of the most important components in asphalt shingles actually what pre prevents it from using more in the roads because you cannot break or separate the fiberglass. And if you put a little bit more than 5%, now you're gonna have those potholes and you're gonna have less quality roads. So we obviously cannot not use fiberglass, but that fiberglass that makes aggregate less usable for roads. And that's the bigger problem. But the good thing is we need a lot of roads and you're talking about millions and millions of pounds of aggregates. Even three, five percent is still big saving for road companies. So what do you have on the out? You have nails? Yeah, you got asphalt, asphalt the, the aggregate, and then the tar, the oil, you know, all the things. And that, the granules? And yeah. The, but is it all the aggregate, water? Or? We call it aggregate. One. It's all one. Yeah. And they use it for roads? Yes. Roads and also dust control. For uh, like country roads, they'll take it and they'll they'll spread it on the road and if you were uh, for, for like recycled asphalt pavement, that's 
of stuff they just mill off the road and it's nice, you yeah. know, like gravel. If you lay that down in summertime, it'll harden almost like, like pavement again. What I've read is when the oil price goes up, this does not make sense or no, vice versa. Do with that. No. There's... What's the main challenges here? Money, capital. Equipment failures, breakdowns. And I absolutely love the honesty of recycler. What's the biggest challenge? And I talk to people who have attempted to do this all over the country. And capital, investment, um, equipment, it's all expensive. It's expensive gig. And who would need to invest in something like this? Well, I nominate asphalt manufacturers for two reasons. Number one is because they're already calling themselves sustainability leaders. They already have the capital and they want to look good in, in the eyes of contractors and public that they actually doing something. So how about you help these recyclers? Because right now recyclers have no help from people who produce their products. Of course, we recycling products have been developed 20 years ago, but if today you're calling yourself a green manufacturer, how about you actually go and work with someone who recycle your shingles? Because these people have never heard from you. Most of those studies come back and show that you can make this work and you can get these to perform. But for now, when it comes to these shingles, most roofing companies and contractors and consumers in Indiana are left with only one option. Landfill. Landfill. In the landfill. The Southside Landfill recognizes these old shingles can and should be recycled. So the landfill has actually segregated its shingle dumping areas from the regular trash. The hope is one day, if the shingles are again in high demand, they can be mined out of the landfill and still recycled. For now, though, there are no plans to do that. I absolutely love the honesty of News 13 investigation team. Good job, guys. And I want to second that message. Right now, we don't have alternatives. Most roofers have to simply keep going to landfills and keep burying shingles. And I'm going to explain to you why we have this picture, why such a big disconnect between marketing promise and what's actually taking place. Let me introduce you to ESG rating. An ESG rating measures a company's exposure to long-term environmental, social, and government risks. This risks involving issues such as energy efficiency, worker safety, board independence, have financial implications. Don't forget that we are dealing with publicly traded companies and private companies that relies on big capital. And those companies have to stay green or have good ESG rating in order to secure more capital. Think about time and energy it takes to prepare sustainability report, to try to prove to someone that you're doing something <laughs> and in reality, it's not. Own Scorning, GF, Atlas, ICO, Tamco, Malarkey, the rest of you guys, all the manufacturers. We're gonna do follow up on this story. You know, I did talk to Own Scorning and Own Scorning representative admit that they don't do enough. They are leaders, they call themselves leaders, but he could not explain why only few percent of shingles getting recycled. So I think in roofing, you have seen right the product development around duration duration flex right that are longer lasting better products so that helps so we don't have to continue to manufacture the same level at all times and i think where we need to improve is on the recycling part of it owen scorning also admitted seeing news 13 investigation story and they told me over the phone it was a wake-up call for them and i hope that this video will be a wake-up call for all of us and I think the the other thing that the Indian Indiana um, news talked about was actually the pledge, right? And and the pledge that our contractors go and that we have on our website, talking about you know their ability to to recycle. And and we started that a long time ago. And think it was a positive thing but as the number of recyclers as you correctly mentioned has decreased over time right i think we um you know we have looked at changing that pledge and and, and being a little more transparent with 
customers around what exactly that pledge means. So if you go look at our website now, we have updated what the shingle recycling pledge actually talks about. I think we need to start building landfills just for asphalt shingles. And if we don't have technology or capacity to do it today, maybe we'll come back to it five, 10 years from now when we do have technology, but at least we have something to work with. And lastly, let's give credit to those here who are trying. It's a hard work. Manufacturers should start talking to recycling companies. We cannot be only money driven. We also have to really think and do something about our planet and we cannot be the problem. Comment below please what you think. This video might be forced to be removed by asphalt shingle manufacturers. If you're a roofer and in your area you have recycling plant and you know for a fact that they do recycle and you know for a fact that it does go to roads, comment below. We do want to follow up on this story in 2022. We will come to you. We will interview people in the game. Maybe your recycling center, maybe people who actually build the roads. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention and for being supportive of our channel. You are absolutely amazing. I love this industry. It gave me everything I have and I'm going to give back as much as I can too to change it for the better. See you guys in the next video.